A year ago, during early winter, I embarked on a weekend hiking trip in a nearby national park, aiming to enjoy the last days of favorable weather before winter set in with its cold and snow. Eager to make the most of the opportunity, I set out on a trail recommended by a friend, promising a serene view of a lake without the usual crowd. However, upon reaching the trailhead, my expectations were not met. There were no signs or clear markings, just a faint path weaving through the trees. Despite the lack of guidance, the path seemed navigable, so I decided to proceed. It quickly became evident that this trail was rarely traversed. There were scant shoe prints in the dirt, and the path lacked the polished appearance of more frequented routes. While not alarming, it did catch my attention. Nevertheless, the forest surrounding the path was enchanting, teeming with wildlife and adorned with the vibrant hues of autumn leaves. About a mile into my hike, I stumbled upon something intriguing. Further along the trail, I noticed another path veering off into the woods. Despite my curiosity, I opted to stay on the main trail. However, the existence of this additional path puzzled me. Why would there be another trail branching off from an already scarcely used route? As I continued my hike, more of these side trails emerged, each leading off in seemingly random directions, without any clear destination in sight. It was a perplexing sight. Then, after roughly three hours of walking, the trail abruptly came to an end. There was no continuation, just an expanse of dense forest ahead. Suddenly, I heard footsteps behind me. Turning around, I spotted a figure in the distance. He wore a tattered jacket and carried no backpack. Strangely, he veered off the trail I was on and onto one of the side paths, seemingly unaware of my presence. He continued walking with his head down, oblivious to his surroundings, which sent a shiver down my spine. Something about his demeanor and appearance unsettled me, so I made sure to keep out of sight as I observed him disappearing into the woods. By this time, daylight was fading rapidly, and realizing I had lost track of time, I reluctantly abandoned my quest to find the lake and decided to head back to my car. However, my plans were thwarted when I reached a junction of paths that I didn't recall encountering before. Instantly, I recalled the sudden end of the previous trail, leading me to suspect that I had inadvertently taken the wrong path. I scanned the ground, hoping to spot my own footprints to guide me, but found none. Then, I heard it once more, footsteps behind me. I spun around, peering into the gathering darkness. In the distance, amidst the forest, I spotted the same man, standing motionless and facing me. His silent observation sent a shiver down my spine, and without a word spoken, I felt an unsettling chill run through my body. Instinctively, I turned away, choosing the path opposite to where he stood. Hastening my pace, I cast furtive glances over my shoulder, but soon lost sight of him. For over an hour, I pressed on, grappling with the dual concerns of being lost and the eerie presence of the stranger. After some time, I veered off the path and sought refuge behind a tree, hoping for respite. As I paused to quench my thirst with water, barely a moment elapsed before I heard those familiar footsteps drawing closer. Huddled behind the tree, I listened anxiously as the sound of his approach grew louder until the man passed by, his gaze fixed ahead as though oblivious to my presence. Despite his apparent focus on the path ahead, I couldn't shake the feeling of being pursued. Once he was out of sight, I seized the opportunity to flee, retracing my steps in a panicked dash. Reaching the intersection, I hastily selected one of the paths, praying it would lead me in the right direction. Fortunately, it did. As I made my way back to my car, 
guided only by the faint illumination of the moon. I couldn't shake the feeling that the man I encountered had sinister intentions. His demeanor and behavior hinted at something darker, and I couldn't help but feel relieved that I had potentially dodged a dangerous situation. At just 19 years old, I was spending my summer break at home after my first year of college. My mom lived in the city, in the same house where I grew up, while my dad resided in a small home outside the city, nestled against the woods. I always found solace in the tranquility of his place, away from the bustle of urban life. It was during this summer that I decided to embark on a solo camping trip in the woods behind my dad's house. Equipped with all the necessary gear and some prior camping experience, I set out just a couple of hours before sunset. Walking in silence, I immersed myself in the natural surroundings, relishing the sights and sounds of the forest. My plan was simple, to venture out for about half an hour, find a suitable spot to pitch my tent, and spend a peaceful night under the stars. After setting up camp and enjoying the serenity of the evening, I retired to my tent a couple of hours later. Although I initially intended to leave in the morning, I found myself compelled to linger a bit longer. I strolled leisurely through the woods, basking in the quietude of nature as the day slipped away unnoticed. As the sun began its descent, signaling the approaching twilight, I reluctantly packed up my belongings and prepared to head back home. Lost in thought and conversation with myself, I wandered between the trees, oblivious to the passage of time. However, as the sun dipped lower in the sky, I suddenly realized that I had been walking for longer than I anticipated. Pausing to assess my surroundings, I lifted my head, a sense of unease creeping over me. Looking around, I realized I didn't recognize the area at all. While it was possible that I had simply strayed slightly off course, without a defined path to follow, a sense of unease gnawed at me. Despite scanning my surroundings for what felt like an eternity, I couldn't discern which direction to take. If I had been heading the right way, I should have reached home by now, or at least stumbled upon the road leading to my dad's house. Fueled by a sense of urgency spurred on by the sinking sun, I pressed on in the same direction, hoping to chance upon a road eventually. However, as the woods grew darker with each passing moment, my anxiety escalated. I frantically scanned the dimly lit surroundings, desperate for any sign of guidance. Yet, the encroaching darkness obscured any hope of clarity, limiting my visibility to a mere 30 or 40 feet. Then, a flickering light caught my eye in the distance, igniting a spark of hope within me. Hastening my pace toward it, I soon distinguished the outline of a solitary house nestled amidst the trees. Initially relieved, I surmised it might belong to one of my dad's neighbors or lead me to a nearby road. However, upon nearing the clearing, my hopes were dashed. There were no roads, no neighboring lights, not even a gravel driveway in sight. The house itself appeared weathered, resembling more of a cabin than a typical residence. Yet, the faint glow emanating from a downstairs window indicated it was occupied. Circling cautiously to the other side, staying within the cover of trees, I searched in vain for any signs of civilization. Reluctantly, I concluded that my only recourse was to seek help from whoever resided there. Approaching the front door, I paused momentarily, straining to hear any movement within. After a brief moment, I rang the doorbell, prompting hurried footsteps from within. Anticipating scrutiny from the other side of the door, I called out, Hi, sorry to bother you. I'm lost and was hoping you could point me in the direction of the nearest street. As the door creaked open, 
revealing two men in their forties, a sense of apprehension washed over me. They appeared disheveled and exchanged a brief glance before one of them stepped forward, his gaze darting past me towards the tree line as if checking for any other presence. Sensing my hesitation, he gestured for me to enter. I'm okay, I just need directions, I insisted. Wary of stepping into a stranger's house in the middle of the woods and uncertain of the purpose it would serve. Their frowns deepened at my refusal and one of them questioned my motives for being out there. I reiterated that I was merely camping and had lost my way, but their skeptical looks suggested they didn't believe me. As one of the men ventured outside, his scrutiny intensified, inadvertently revealing the sparse interior, illuminated only by a solitary lamp amidst the dust-covered floor. Instinctively, I distanced myself from him, sensing a shift in their demeanor as they turned cold and distant. Suddenly, without warning, one of them lunged towards me, attempting to tackle me to the ground. Reacting swiftly, I evaded his grasp and bolted towards the safety of the trees. With the sound of footsteps in pursuit, I sprinted frantically, the adrenaline coursing through my veins. Eventually, the pursuit ceased as I disappeared into the darkness of the woods. Soon after, the lights from the house extinguished, plunging the surroundings into darkness once more. Hours passed before I finally stumbled upon a road, realizing with dismay that I had trekked miles in the wrong direction, further away from safety, had evolved into a steady rain, obscuring the landscape beyond my windshield. Despite the worsening weather, I pressed on, determined to reach my destination. The drive, however, soon transformed into a solitary journey as other vehicles became increasingly sparse and signs of civilization dwindled. By late afternoon, the once familiar sight of towns and cities had vanished, replaced by vast expanses of grassy fields and thick forests. The desolate surroundings, coupled with the relentless rain, instilled a sense of isolation that gnawed at my nerves. As the hours wore on, my confidence waned and doubts crept into my mind. Could I endure the long, solitary stretch ahead? Would I reach my destination safely? Despite the uncertainties, I soldiered on, pushing through fatigue and monotony. With each passing mile, the rain pounded harder against the windshield, blurring the edges of the road and amplifying the feeling of isolation. Yet, amidst the solitude and the relentless downpour, there lingered a sense of determination, a resolve to overcome the challenges of the journey and emerge triumphant on the other side. As dusk descended and darkness enveloped the landscape, I press it onward, guided by the faint glow of my headlights cutting through the rain soaker night. Though the road ahead stretched on seemingly endless, I remained steadfast in my resolve, knowing that with each passing mile, I drew closer to my destination. As the rain intensified, pounding relentlessly against the windshield, visibility dwindled, making it increasingly challenging to navigate the road ahead. Each mile deeper into the forest seemed to coincide with a surge in the downpour's ferocity. Despite my hopes that the rain would ease by sunset, it persisted, casting a veil of uncertainty over the journey. With my focus laser sharp on the road ahead, I proceeded cautiously, maneuvering with painstaking care to avoid sliding off into the treacherous ditches flanking the road. Hour after hour, I pressed on through the deluge, the relentless rain obscuring any semblance of surroundings. As twilight faded into darkness, 
the road began to twist and turn, leading me deeper into the dense forest. The trees loomed ominously overhead, their dense foliage blocking out all but the dimmest traces of light. Anxiety gnawed at me as I contemplated the oddity of such a remote and winding highway. Puzzled, I slowed to a halt, pulling over to the shoulder in search of answers. Fumbling for my phone, I attempted to access the directions, only to find that there was no signal. Uncertainty gripped me as I grappled with the possibility of having veered off course or simply succumbed to paranoia. Straining to peer through the rain-soaked windows, I desperately sought any indication of my whereabouts. Yet, all that greeted me was the impenetrable darkness of the forest, shrouded in the relentless downpour, and disappeared from view. Despite his offer of assistance, a sense of unease lingered within me, nagging at my instincts. As I waited in the dimly lit cabin of my car, uncertainty gnawed at my thoughts. Minutes stretched into an eternity as the stranger remained outside, his presence casting a shadow of doubt over the isolated roadside encounter. Despite the relentless rain, he seemed unperturbed, his dark hoodie providing little protection against the downpour. When he returned, I lowered my window slightly, wary of the stranger's intentions. His offer of help seemed genuine enough, yet a flicker of suspicion danced at the edges of my consciousness. Why hadn't he known our location or the status of the highway? As he moved to retrieve his phone, I hesitated, grappling with a growing sense of unease. Something about the situation felt amiss, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly what. With a sense of apprehension, I watched him disappear into the blinding glow of his headlights, swallowed by the darkness beyond. Despite the potential assistance he offered, a nagging voice within me urged caution, warning against trusting too easily in this isolated stretch of road. As the rain continued to drum against the roof of my car, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. As the stranger returned from his car, I observed his movements with a growing sense of apprehension. There was a fleeting glimpse of something in his hand, a detail that raised red flags in my mind. Reacting instinctively, I shifted the car into drive just as he approached, but not before I saw him kneel by my back tire, fumbling with an object. With a surge of adrenaline, I floored the gas pedal, the sudden movement startling the man as he hastily withdrew from the tire. His actions confirmed my worst fears. He had jammed something into my tire, undoubtedly with malicious intent. Driving away in a panic, I kept a vigilant eye on the rearview mirror, expecting to see the glare of headlights pursuing me. Yet, to my immense relief, there was no sign of the stranger behind me. For several nerve-wracking minutes, I drove in a frenzied state, heart pounding in my chest, the fear of the unknown weighing heavily on my mind. It wasn't until I reached an intersection with a gas station sign looming ahead that a semblance of safety washed over me. Pulling into the gas station, I wasted no time in contacting the authorities my hands trembling as I recounted the chilling encounter. It was then that I discovered the true extent of the danger I had narrowly escaped. The man had stabbed my tire with a screwdriver, a menacing weapon still wedged into the rubber, its metal tip protruding ominously. Reflecting on the harrowing ordeal, I realized that the screwdriver, though a tool of destruction, had inadvertently saved me from a fate far worse. If not for its presence, I might have found myself stranded on the deserted road at the mercy of a predator lurking in the shadows. 
as I sat in the safety of the gas station, surrounded by the comforting glow of fluorescent lights, I couldn't help but shudder at the thought of what could have been. That night, I escaped the clutches of danger by mere seconds, a twist of fate that left me shaken to the core. <laughs>